Hello everyone, I'm Mauro Werder. I'll be talking about a Bayesian Glacier Ice Thickness Estimation Model, BITE. Uh, on GitHub, I'm Mauro3, and here are my co-authors on this project. So why should I model ice thickness of glaciers? Here is a, a photograph of Unterar Glacier on, in Switzerland. So it flows down here. This is the glacier tongue. It's heavily debris covered, so it doesn't look quite so white and shiny as glaciers often do. Um, and so how glaciers work is that there's more snowfall in the top than melt. And so this snowfall accumulates, uh, transforms into ice and starts flowing down the mountain as a very viscous fluid. Uh, eventually it gets into areas where melt is larger than snowfall. And so uh, you start melting away the glacier. And so ice thickness uh, estimates, well, um, well, it'd be interesting to know what the ice thickness say is, say, in this area here, but they are in fact needed for ice flow modeling, for hydrological forecasts, and for sea level rise projections. So for the last item, you want to know the total volume of uh, all the glaciers in the world, so you can predict how much sea level rises if they melt. Direct observation of ice thickness are possible via ground penetrating radar usually, but those are expensive and thus there are not many around. And various models have been proposed to infer ice thickness from uh, spars or almost no observations. And this work here is a new approach, combining an existing forward model with a Bayesian inference scheme. And this work was published recently in the Journal of Glaciology, and you can find it probably easiest if you go via the project uh, GitHub site here. So, uh, um, so how does a model and measurements of ice thickness look like? So, sorry, uh, again, here is the image of Unterar Gletscher, and here is a map view of Unterar Gletscher. So the tongue down here corresponds to this area here, and this is a map of ice thickness. It shows both measurements and uh, model results. And the measurements are surrounded by these thin white lines. So you see there are lots and lots of radar tracks done on this glacier. Um, so the ice thickness is very well estimated here. But most glaciers in the world, in fact, have uh, very few or, in fact, zero measurements of ice thickness. The background color is uh, the result from running the bite model. So what the bite model uh, models the ice thickness as. So the model uh, combines an established forward model with a Bayesian inversion scheme. The forward model is uh, one by Houston Farinotti. It's uh, based on mass conservation, ice physics, and some empirical relations. So the basic idea is that it's relatively easy to know how much uh, snowfall there is at the top, how much melt there is at the bottom. You can get this, for instance, well, from measurements or from climate models. And once you know this, you know the mass turnover in the system. And so you know the flux of ice. And to accommodate a certain flux of ice, you need to have a certain thickness. The thicker a glacier is, the more flux it can uh, um, create. So this uh, allows us to get to the ice thickness. And now I put a, well, I recoded this forward model in, in Julia, and then I put a, this into a stochastic framework as well, into a Bayesian framework. So this meant that I had to code up a likelihood function, which essentially codes the difference between data versus model. And for this, I just assumed uh, uh, normally distributed errors of the, of the data versus the model. And you also need to have some priors. So that's just prior information you know, say, on your parameters. So, for instance, one of the parameters is this, uh, how much snowfall there is. Um, yeah, and then once you have that, you can uh, calculate the posterior, which is the prior times the likelihood, and uh, put this whole thing into a Markov chain Monte Carlo method to uh, actually estimate the parameters. So here is uh, what uh, results look like. Uh, so here's the flow line of the Unterar Gletscher, so along the middle, and it 
the bottom line is the, uh, the bed, the top line is the surface, so that shows you the thickness. It also calculates the flow speed, so we see it's around 20, 30 meters per year of the ice flow. Uh, and then it calculates well, the, the ice thickness, and so you get a mean ice thickness, while well, distribution of uh, estimated mean ice thicknesses, so we see it's around 155 meters plus minus 5, 10 meters. And here is uh, histograms and uh, scatter plots of the parameters. Um, yeah, and so this MCMC procedure gives you uh, both the parameters, but also predictions for the ice thickness. And so here is some of these ice thickness predictions. In some cases, in some transects, it's really good. In other ones, it's okay-ish. But all in all, we find that the model does a, does a good job in doing this. And so we went and applied this model to 30,000 glaciers from around the world. Uh, to put this in context, there's 200,000 glaciers approximately on Earth. So we uh, modeled a good chunk of them. Uh, we did this in these uh, regions here, Arctic Canada, Svalbard, uh, Alps, and the Karakorum. And so here's a few maps of uh, example glaciers. So for instance, here, Great Alec Gletscher, and here, the Barnes Ice Cap. And so we compared the volumes uh, calculated thus with the volumes uh, calculated in a recent community study, the G2TI study. And generally, our results in blue and brown compare well to the green results from this uh, community study. So uh, why Julium? Uh, this was my first large Julia model, and development began back in 2015. That was uh, around Julia 0.4. And I was already programming in Julia back then, so it was clear that I would do it in Julia. But one of the cases to use Julia here is because performance is important, because the MCMC procedure requires about 100,000 model evaluations for each uh, glacier. And so that actually puts us at about uh, 100 million ice thickness maps calculated for the production run. And so that was about 100 core hours. And so it was important to have good speed, and Julia provides this. But last but not least is uh, Julia School to program in. And there is actually a case study by Julia Computing uh, on this project. Uh, so if, if you fancy reading about this, uh, you can go there. Uh, so concluding, the BITE model performs well um, compared to all the other models out there, and it was applied to 30,000 glaciers. Uh, the model is open source, you can find it here on GitHub, and it's written in Julian. And this work was recently published in, uh, in the Journal of Glaciology. Okay, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>